uh, it'd be wonderful to hear from you uh, a little bit about your life journey. How did you land where you are today as a reverend and in your practice? So I experienced many different kinds of meditation and body practices and things like that that I, all, I thought were all very, very helpful and useful. Um, but I was still looking for something else. And uh, it wasn't until I took a journey in uh, about 24 years ago in California, kind of a personal pilgrimage, um, that I went to the Tassajara Zen Mountain Center in the Los Padres National Forest. And I sat meditation in a Zen temple. So I thought, oh, this is it. This is what I've been looking for. I knew I needed to affiliate with a teacher, which I did pretty quickly, started studying with him at length. Um, I received late ordination in 2005, um, priest ordination in 2013, and then transmission to be a full teacher in this particular uh, lineage, Soto Zen lineage, in 2017. I don't think that my story is all that dissimilar from many, many people's uh, spiritual seeking. You know, we explore things and are seeking to find what feels authentic, what feels true and helpful. Yeah, and so for me, Zen Buddhism has been very helpful. How does impermanence and permanence uh, play a role in, in how you view the world? Impermanence most often is a pretty beautiful thing. You know, if, if I'm um, going through difficulty, I can say to myself, the situation is not permanent. Likewise, if I'm um, experiencing something exquisite, if I really acknowledge that it's not permanent, then I hopefully will be able to shine my full attention on it and take care of it. So in both cases, um, my acceptance that everything is impermanent is a freedom. You know, even in my own life, I can see these progressions of things that I could not anticipate. So that has taught me to be more accepting and patient with what is. How, how would you say that art and, and the creation of art plays a role in, in how you view the world and how you go about your practice? So the, I think the, the art and the artists play this role in, um, in some ways documenting for the future, but also representing it's what's happening now for those of us that are living now. So I think it's a very important role. I think, I think it's also a, a way of expressing um, emotion. So it's healthy for the community. For um, Here in DC, we have all these beautiful murals in different little neighborhoods. And every time I encounter one, my heart sings. It just makes me feel like there is beauty um, where I wasn't looking for it. Um, and so that allows us to kind of kind of balance some of the difficulties in life, the suffering we have in life, with with um, beauty. With beauty, you know, when we when we sit zazen, when we sit in meditation, the idea is to be one with everything and to take care of everything, no separation. Could you identify any object at the museum, um, you know, that that I think strikes that balance for you, or, or that represents for you um, ways that you think about? fleeting ideas and transitions and impermanence, even if you're looking at something that's that's rather old. What if the books that had been written down that told the story were no longer available, but the artist in rendering the story into stone makes it more possible for that story to be to be taught, to be known going into the future? So those more permanent objects, those more permanent pieces of art, um, which have taken probably more time, more investment, more skill by different kinds of artists to make, to last and to be taken care of for that time. The, the value is in um, carrying on the story, carrying on the teachings, being the teachings. You know, one of the objects was um, a medicine Buddha and the medicine Buddha is just sitting zazen. You know, so that when one looks at the, this, this um, metal Buddha, who could last for centuries still into the future, um, it's, it's a human form. And you say to yourself, I'm, I'm a human form. 
I can try to do that. I could figure that out. What would that be like to sit with that composure, that peacefulness? When when you walk through a museum like this and, and you see objects coming from so many different spiritual practices and so many different faiths, do only the objects pertaining to Buddhism speak to you? Or do you feel like there is something that we can learn from the idea of many different faiths being housed in a single institution? I think it's hugely imp important for me to have exposure and greater knowledge about, again, the, the kind of history of how um, various faiths have interacted in the past. And the museum is the place where that's being held through art. I remember being in the museum and seeing some scroll work from um, the time of the Maharajas in India and in kind of learning how tolerant the Islamic people ruling that area were of the host of many other religious practices at that time. You know, and that was just sort of, uh, it allowed me to break free of this idea that in any one geographic area, only one thing can work. You know, the, the many, many different religious um, expressions of spiritual practice through religious schools or religions could, um, could be in harmony. This aspect of curiosity too, like just what is that? You know, what 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 is it that is chosen to be um, remembered or held held up as important um, and preserved? I think can tell us a lot about um, our commonalities. Um, that provides a, a language for humans then to be able to talk to each other or be with each other. How would you say that you are compelled to continue to build community? Like, like, do you feel like at this point, community plays as deep of a role as it did in the very beginning when you were just searching? Um, or has that idea of community shifted for you over time? And, and how do you see the role of, uh, or your role in community into the future? I don't want Buddhism to be hidden. I want the best of Buddhism to be forward and and helpful, supportive and, and visible. That's why that's why I'm willing to do what I do and and, and trying to support this the small sangha that we have here and have have those people uh, be visible too. And we're from all places of the world. But we're just we're we're like Washington D.C. People are from everywhere across the country, across the world all different nationalities and backgrounds. And um, it's important for that to be uh, the face of Buddhism here in the United States too.